I really do need to rejig that coffee machine because it's coming out a little bit watery. We like that smooth, creamy coffee flow. And uh, the problem with beans is that they are constantly requiring adjustment because of course the oils and I guess the moisture levels in the beans vary and so the grind settings change which means that you need to constantly stay on top particularly when you're changing brands which we do sometimes so this isn't the best coffee I've had to be honest with you in the last couple of weeks but I'll make some tweaks and uh, we'll have a second one this afternoon which I'm sure will be a lot creamier than this one however this morning on this very wet December morning we kind of missed the snow and ice here, by the way. I think that was down south, or maybe up north, or probably both, anywhere but the Midlands, got the snow over the weekend. And um, yeah, it's just been a bit mild, wet, drizzly, and I think that's the forecast for the foreseeable. But anyway, this morning I chucked on a belt and it was the first time I'd stuck it on. It's from a brand called Sage Brown. I'll quickly show you. Sage Brown and it's just a little bit too big and so I need to punch a new hole into it and I thought let's vlog it <laughs> so this is the contraption which looks like a torture tool and um, I used to actually slowly work my way up from the thinnest and spikiest of the um, punches um, and then go larger and larger because I thought that that would be the best way to create a nice hole I was wrong. You need to go in with the exact size that you want and then you'll end up with the cleanest punch. So a good way to check of course is just to stick the punch through an existing hole and get a feel for the size that you desire. I'd say that we probably want one smaller than that. Which way are we going? So I'm going to knock it to this size here which they haven't got size labels on them but it's like the mid-range size by the looks of it. So let's have a look at that. That feels a bit better. So I want to try and keep a nice even balance on the belt holes. I don't want it to be obvious that I punched a hole in myself. And I also want to make sure that I'm doing it on the right side as well, because that would be useful. So we're going to be doing it just here because we're making the belt smaller. I'm roughly, I should be using a tape measure, but my fat thumb actually fits very nicely in between the gap of the holes so it's a where the nail starts and finishes <laughs> alley science here that is the width that we're going for so we're going to be going roughly there what do you think 40? twist. little twist goes a long way. And voila! We have our new hole. So I like to um, just reverse this and just go, not hard, but just give it a little, little tweak through the back and then go back to the front again. And give that a nice big, big squeeze and twist. There we go. Quick check to make sure that's gone through sufficiently. So it has gone through, but it's a little bit tighter than I would have liked to have seen that. So I'm just going to go one size bigger. So these are the existing holes, and this is the new hole that we've just punched in. It looks pretty, pretty good, if you ask me wasn't as clean as one clean punch but still I'll quickly give that a go see how that fits these are actually my new trousers as well from wax london i got these back from the alteration center last week and i'm pretty happy with how they fit they're very comfortable there's a little bit of width around the thigh area it tends to parachute out this part of the leg so we did try and just carry through and slim out the width of the trouser which i think we've done a pretty good job they're very comfortable because they're nice and loose, which is what I was trying to achieve when I brought these. 
but I think it's also taught me that a single pleat is actually probably more preferable for me. And that is nice and tight. Very happy with that. Lovely. Also, this is probably common knowledge, but when I pack my belts away, I now take the end of the belt and put it through the front of the buckle, pull it tight, and then wrap this around like so. And then it just sort of holds it in place on the majority of belts. Some belts are a little bit resistant and they try to like open back up again, but on the majority of belts they'll hold themselves like that. And I just store them away. It saves them from getting creased and damaged. And it also means they're quite compact. And then I have another black belt here that I'd also like to do the same to. This is a less forgiving belt because it's a smooth leather and it's not got any grain or detail to it. It's gonna mean that any slips will show up. So we need to make sure that this is spot on. So. I'm gonna go straight to the bigger. Just do the thumb test. Spot on, exactly the same. So you want the hole there. Little twizzle. That's great, okay, bingo. I'll quickly show you this belt on. And there we have it. One thing I've realized, and it actually came from photographing myself whilst I was out doing some of my outfit photography. And I realized that when I was wearing loose belts, they were really unflattering in how they were sitting on my trouser. Because they weren't tight, they weren't keeping a nice firm hold of the trouser. The belt was kind of dropping forward and you could tell that it was loose, even though it was only fractional. I think it makes a big difference when you have those little details just tidied up. So this is a really handy tool to have. Um, Lydia picked this up a couple of years ago, maybe even longer, and I've got so much use out of it already. So I'd highly suggest grabbing one if you're somebody that wears a lot of belts and you tend to find that you either lose weight or gain weight and you want to extend or shorten the length of your belt. Having this is really convenient. So yeah, a welcome tool. Um, it's probably just an Amazon job and um, I will link this down below. However, today Lids and I are going to be heading to London because it is Katie Piper's Christmas Carol. So we're gonna be getting in the Christmas spirit. It's gonna be our first Christmas carols of the season, which I'm really excited about. I am not a good singer at all. Like, it is pretty horrific for anybody around me if I really give it some. But I can definitely just hum along and uh, just kind of subtly be like a background background singer yeah i'm looking forward to it it should be really lovely hopefully we don't get caught out in the rain i'm assuming that it's going to be inside because of the weather but only time will tell it's going to be down in london um, i do have the details but i do need to double check to find out exactly where that's going to be but today i'd actually like to go upstairs and create a tiktok video two tiktok videos actually or one Instagram Reels and one TikTok. Reels will be the outfit that I'm going to be wearing this evening to go down to the carols. And the TikTok that I'd like to put together, three or four, maybe even five fragrances that are like people pleaser fragrances. I get quite a lot of requests on those platforms to do skincare and fragrance videos. And I recently did a like head turners fragrance video, which were some really powerful, beautiful, strong fragrances that I personally love, like some of my top 10 fragrances were featured in that video. However, I appreciate that they're incredibly expensive. I think the average was probably around the 250, 300 pound mark for a bottle. So in this video, I'm not going to go for cheap fragrances as like the rule, but I am going to look at fragrances that are widely enjoyed. They're not too unique in their smells, but they are a safe bet, which means that they're perfect for gifted. And so I'm gonna go upstairs and take a look at some fragrances that I have in my cupboards that I think fit that kind of category. So it won't feature the niche and unique fragrances that I did in my last video and I actually covered on my YouTube channel as well. This will be some of the brands that you're much more familiar with and you see a lot more often. So brands that fall under Estee Lauder, Coty, Puge, L'Oreal, and so forth. Um, they're the kind of fragrances that I'm gonna be looking at. 
but I'm gonna make sure that they're really nice and some timeless fragrances in there as well because just because they don't have the price tag does not mean that they're not good fragrances. There's gonna be some brilliant fragrances in this video. It's kind of like a safe. And just as an example, Dior Sauvage is like a people pleaser. Everybody likes the fragrance, admittedly. Some people might be a little bit tired of smelling it, but it's one of those fragrances that if you were to buy it for somebody, your odds are with you that they're going to enjoy it and wear it and like it. And I think that it's a safe bet. So it's gonna be fragrances like that that fall in that category. And so if you do wanna go and see that video, make sure you head over to my TikTok because hopefully by the time this video goes up, that will already be up or it'll be going up very soon. So that's the plan of action today. I'm not gonna vlog it because otherwise I'm just duplicating the content, but I will be taking you down to London. Um, so I'll quickly share with you my outfit for the evening and then we'll head down to London and enjoy the night getting into the festive spirit. Okay, I've just finished off filming that TikTok video. It went very well. I'm gonna title it Crowd Pleasers. I think that there's some fantastic fragrances there, particularly for anybody that you feel not 100% sure on whether they're gonna like it or not, because fragrances ultimately are very personal, but there are definitely fragrances that you can lean into for safety. And I think they're a very lovely gift, um, particularly if you're stuck for ideas, buying somebody a fragrance is often a nice option. Whilst we're on the subject of fragrances, I didn't vlog Lydia and my time in London when we stayed at the Rosewood recently. But a lovely stay and we actually went to Burlington Arcade and visited Roger. And I also received the gift just before we took off from Amouage. And so I'm gonna quickly open these two fragrances with you. I try not to duplicate the vlogs as much anymore. Carol's later, you might be a little bit doing that. But I try to avoid it because I think it's nice to have some fresh content on either of our channels. And so if we're documenting the same thing, it also makes it a little bit easier because I can help Lydia film and vice versa. So we did stop by Roger in Burlington Arcade, which is their flagship, and we learned a little bit about the brand. I actually didn't know that they were British owned, and they've got Lilique crystals in the bottle lids. This was a fragrance that I got to select out of all of their collections, and they've got some really unique scents. So I would say that if you're really confident in who you're buying for, or you're treating yourself, Roger is a fantastic house to go and check out and explore. I would say a very flamboyant and a very experimental fragrance house, which is really lovely. And the package is beautiful. So we open this up, so nicely wrapped. Again, gift wrapping in store, does the job for you. We all like a convenient holiday gift in season, don't we? So the fragrance here we have today is Manhattan. I was stuck between a few of their fragrances. Elysium, um, there was a oud, which, uh, what, which one was it? They have a few ouds. One of the oud fragrances and Manhattan. I was kind of toying and I was smelling my hand and trying to work out which fragrance that I was warming to. And they were changing as they were drying down. I was like, oh, I prefer this one, I prefer that one. So it's quite a tight call, but I ended up settling on Manhattan. This was described to me as a fragrance that kind of smells like a jazz club in New York. And I just really liked that visual. I feel like if nothing else, that sold it to me, but it's a beautiful fragrance. It smells divine. And as you can see, it comes in this stunning bottle, which you can see just here. You can see all of the hand-mounted Lily crystals in the lid, which has got a nice weight to it as well, which I always quite like. I'm starting to enjoy fragrance bottles a lot more. I used to be pretty unfazed by them, but I don't know if it's my conscious or whether it's something that brands have been putting more effort into, but it feels like fragrance bottles are getting incredible, like really impressive. They are actually ornament pieces, aren't they now? So yeah, beautiful, beautiful bottle. And um, yeah, this is, it is unreal. Wow, I forgot how good that was. That smells amazing. This is one of those fragrances that I would classify as my special occasion fragrances. Well, I've just quickly pulled up the notes that are in this fragrance because I don't know them off the top of my head. 
bergamot, lavender and basil, which are at the top. And then in the heart we have rose de mal, jasmine, violet, coconut, and then in the base notes, we've got quite a lot in the base actually here. We have ginger, pink pepper, cinnamon, clove, patchouli, I like patchouli, oak moss, tobacco, vetiver, cedarwood, I like all of those, pine, benzoin, vanilla, and musk. I think that musk is one of those fragrance notes that I'm starting to realize I warm towards. And so I think that that's why the dry down is so important with fragrances because it really settles differently on the skin and then again on the dry down. So what you pick up initially when you're smelling a fragrance is of course all of those top notes and often slightly more floral and sweet notes. And as it dries down, it kind of settles in. That's where you're gonna be left with the fragrance for the majority of the time. So that's really where you want to know, like after an hour, what does it smell like? Do I like it? Does it sit well on my skin? If so, it's a great way of finding a fragrance that works for you. So I'd always advise that if you're gonna be spending this kind of money on a fragrance, definitely go in. They're super helpful, um, really resourceful in these fragrance houses. And they'll be able to give you some advice from the fragrances that you tell them that you already enjoy and like, and they'll be able to pair some of their fragrances with you to hopefully help you discover new fragrances that align with you. You'll be able to spritz four or five different fragrances on your hands and arms. You'll be able to go away, come back, make sure you note down where you sprayed which one, and then you'll be able to come back and then hopefully pick up a fragrance that you know you're gonna be 100% satisfied with. So yeah, this is the first fragrance from Roger. And then the second fragrance, really is Christmas here today, is from Amouage. Now I do have, a little bit of paperwork here. So this is their Jubilation 40 Man, a new addition to exceptional extracts with 40% pure perfume concentration to pay homage to the craft and four decades long heritage of the house. Deep, lavish, sparing no expense, Jubilation celebrates the nobility and masculinity that embraces the full beauty of the East and the West. Amouage are another fragrance house that do have some incredibly unique scents to their collection. And I like that. I think it's really nice that we have the opportunity to discover these really unique houses. And if you don't follow Amouage on Instagram, you should check them out because they've got the most beautiful content, really calming, really soft, beautifully shot. And it just touches really nicely onto the process of fragrance making as well. Wow. Wow, 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 look at that. That is one impressive bottle. That is stunning. So I've touched on this before, but Amouage obviously have a lot of history and heritage and they've really kept true to that within their bottle design. You'll see that throughout all of their fragrances, you'll see that they keep to this same kind of design. Even going back to the very beginning, you can see where this is derived from and it truly is a very special bottle. So just before we spray this, these are some of the fragrance notes in Jubilation 40. We have blackberry, blackcurrant, rosemary, orange in the top note. So I'm expecting obviously quite a fruity initial burst from this fragrance. And in the heart notes, we have scotch broom, cinnamon, clove, rose, celery seeds, quite quite unique. Not familiar with that kind of blend of fragrance notes, to be honest with you, so that'd be interesting to smell. And then we have patchouli, citrus, cedarwood, myrrh, moss, musk, oud in the base notes. So I typically find that Amouage have got quite musky, powdery, deep, rich notes to their fragrances, which often lend themselves to my special occasion category of fragrances because the brand definitely falls into a more bespoke niche and definitely luxury market space. So let's give this a quick squirt. Let's give this a quick spray and see how we go. I'm gonna spray it on my skin because um, as I mentioned, fragrances do smell very differently when they hit the skin. I love that as well. If you try and put the lid on, the, the wrong way there's a magnet so the magnet will pull it in straight <laughs> oh wow wow i'm getting the the oody musky base in there definitely a bit of black currant oh, 
and give that a few more seconds to dry down. It's very strong, very powerful. I don't know if I've mentioned it for a while, but my favorite fragrance that Amouage do is Reflection 45, which is this bottle here. This is an absolute crowd pleaser. Oh, that's drying down really nicely. So when I first smelt it, I felt like the, the only way I can describe it is that the notes didn't feel like they had, were blended. They felt like they were separate entities. So I was getting quite sharp notes from the berry, then from the oud and the musk. It was kind of very defined, which meant that it didn't feel quite as creamy and as soft. But as that's drying down, that's really starting to blend together. Wow. That's lovely. And I don't think that it's going to be as punchy as Reflection 45, which means that it could be a really nice fragrance to wear when we're going out for dinner. So I want to be smelling really good and I want people to smell that I'm smelling really good as well. However, I don't want it to be so powerful that you can taste it when you're eating your food. This could be a great fragrance for that. Nice work, guys. And I love the bottle as well. That is a mega bottle, isn't it? <laughs> I have half an hour to pick an outfit for this evening, film it, and get myself ready to go. So I'm gonna tidy this mess up over here, and then we'll get heading to the Christmas carols. I decided to slightly blend my look into Lydia's this evening. She's gone for a black, navy, and black watch color palette. And so I've decided to go for navy, gray, black myself. I don't know why I find it's just quite nice when we're dressing in similar color palettes. Not identical, just similar. Kind of like complementing one another, I guess. Um, I am going to be taking with me, alongside my outfit, this cashmere scarf from Luca Floney. Incredibly soft. Not sure how cold it's gonna be. It'll be nice to have this as an option to throw on if I get cold, but also I can just easily take it off if I'm too hot. I've got this ribbed chunky roll neck from October, which is also the same place where the belt is from. And then these trousers are Lardini and my boots are churches, as you can see there. These boots have lasted me so long. They're still looking good. I've had them now for maybe five years. I can't actually remember. Maybe not that long, but it's been a very long time. And then just to smarten the look up a little bit, also the most functional coat I have for the colder weather. This is my double-breasted overcoat from New and Lingwood. It's incredibly heavy and warm and lovely. And I could wear my scarf like this, but I think I'm just gonna have it just hidden away in the jacket. So you can see the kind of details of the belt and the pleats. And then to complete my look, I'm gonna be wearing Manhattan by Roger, which is the fragrance that I picked up in Burlington Arcade. So, a couple of squits of that. And that is my look for this evening complete. We're gonna jump in our car and make our way down to London and embrace the evening. We've we'll arrived to the plumber's arms for a little cheeky pine. Yeah, sure. Um, it's just very different. Oh, look at that, I believe that's the old one. As you enter into the building, it's absolutely incredible. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And that is what it looks like from the other side. It's incredible. The church is just starting to fill up right now stage in front of us you can see we've got the microphones we've got a piano over there to the left we are just sat over there you can see louise and so we've got a couple of acoustic guitars going on as well so it's going to be a lovely evening but i also have an ask of you i want you to use tonight to reflect and i want you to ask yourself the question what would you do if it happened to you Post a life changing trauma like a major burn injury, how would you rebuild? Because it can be done. I've done it. And as a charity, 
we have had thousands of other people to do it to. In fact, many of you have been part of that. Your generosity, your support, you've been a huge part of that. Society, um, the media, and subsequently daily life has changed for the better. For those living in visible difference, we're now represented, we're platformed, and we are heard in a way that we weren't certainly 15 years ago when I was born. And that's thank you to some influential people that are here in the room tonight. Now, I was going to say those of you that know me, but I think everyone has some kind of relationship with me in the room tonight. Don't panic, husband. Um, <laughs> but you've all got some kind of relationship with me, and you know that I'm so passionate. I am such a passionate advocate for diversity and inclusion, and so are my team here at the Foundation. One of my personal mantras is to never be rigid, to always be a malleable soul, and be open to change, even if that change is initially unwelcome. To always make the best of whatever situation I find myself in. I would say that I, I love living. I love life, and nothing will ever stop me celebrating it boldly and just doing it my way in a pink six-inch heel <laughs> with just one false eyelash. You know, it's okay, it's organic glue. I could signed off my eye doctor if I just stick to the one eye. Uh, just no glitter, which is a bit annoying in the festive season. Um, but I didn't come to this approach alone. Nobody comes to this kind of approach alone after a traumatic experience like what I'm talking about. Behind me is a huge recovery. And I've spoken about that a lot in detail with many of you in groups or one-to-one. -to -one. Tonight we're going to hear from other people, from other survivors, who are going to share their stories and their recovery with you. A slightly creamier coffee. And a good morning from Lummy. Hello. 
telepathically, we know, we can see. <laughs> it's mornings like this that we live for.